Good day and welcome to another edition of Outdoor Adventures Radio with host Gary Howie. I'm Simon Fuller. A brand new week, Gary. That means a new adventure awaits. What are we going to be talking about today and throughout the week? Well, Simon, you know, we've talked about fishing out of a boat in several different ways, but, you know, a lot of us started shore fishing. So let's just talk about about shore fishing, early season shore fishing. I think there's some pretty good information on that. Absolutely, Gary. It's funny because... uh, most of my fishing is now out of a boat and and I love fishing out of a boat but you're right some of the fondest memories and when you get hooked on the sport of fishing you are typically off a dock off a shore you find a place where the weeds are are matted down if you're in a cow pasture or to a lake where you get a little shore dock and you throw out a jig and you just hope something bites and you know that's where it all begins Gary and and uh, let's be honest you can take that into the adult life and still have a lot of success if you don't have a boat so there's sort of some tips and tactics on shore fishing right quote end quote and how you can be more successful when doing that yeah you bet Simon you know some of the information when you're fishing from a boat is similar to that when you're fishing from a shore. Most species of fish are relating to some type of current break or structure. And last fall, the walleyes moved upstream in preparation for their spawn until, of course, they were blocked by the dam, rapids, or, or some other instruction. And early spring fishing starts as the ice and melting snow go away, frozen ground starts to thaw and runoff comes into the river, no matter if you're river or lake, which uh, increases the current and all species of fish uh, are going to be looking for those slack water pockets where they can rest. Thank you, Gary, for the great information. Look forward to discussing this further as the week rolls on. Thank you as well for joining us and to our fine sponsors who make Outdoor Adventures Radio possible. Until next time, may your adventures be great. Welcome to another edition of Outdoor Adventures Radio with host Gary Howie. I'm Simon Fuller. This week our discussion is on fishing from shore, specifically during the early season. All species of fish, as the ice go out, water levels rise. They search out calmer water areas, and as long as that water level is high, they're going to hang in there until things normalize. And once those levels normalize... uh, they're going to move into the deep water. Once the water warms, they're going to move into that spawning area, and that's with those areas that have gravel or small rocky bottoms. And they have to have some current because uh, the walleye eggs and other species of eggs need aeration in, in order to hatch. Those rough, uneven areas, they actually give those eggs a place to lie just to uh, keep the other predators from gobbling them down. So it's one of those deals, you know. Current breaks are pretty important, whether you're ever uh, fishing from shore you're fishing from a boat and a lot of times when i fish from shore i always like to look for look for that uh, outside edge of current breaks as the food is coming down from the faster water has a tendency to swirl around that outside edge and then come back into the current break so your most aggressive fish are going to be on the outside edge and they're going to be the first to get to the food that's coming downstream and uh Fish will dash out, grab whatever it is, a quick meal, and then slide back in the calmer water to digest that fish, their their catch, I guess, and waiting for the next meal to flow by. Yeah, exactly, Gary. They're just uh, hanging out at their fast food restaurant, and that, that uh, little bit of current, they're hanging in the slack water to, to not exert it to more energy than they need to, and that's where their meal comes from. So, by gosh, if you find that spot, you put your meal in front of them, you might get, uh, get a chance. Thank you, Gary, for the great information. Thank you as well for joining us and to our fine sponsors who make Outdoor Adventures Radio possible. Until next time, may your adventures be great. Welcome to another edition of Outdoor Adventures Radio with host Gary Howie. I'm Simon Fuller. This week we're fishing from shore. Today some tips and tactics when on a river system. Gary? Yeah, you bet. I'll tell you what, current breaks are pretty important. A lot of people don't understand what it is, and all all it is is where the heavier current swirls around and more or less goes back the other direction where the current settles down. A lot of times with that runoff coming in, 
Spotters are muddy, but like walleyes, they've got the excellent vision, and they can find a meal even when it's really muddy. But you can't go wrong uh, brightening up your bait. A fluorescent color, orange, green, or red, lasts a little longer and is more visible in muddy water. So that's not a bad idea, just to use as many of their senses as possible to, uh, to get them to locate your bait. We've been kind of focused on the spring side of things and how the fish act there. Um, but you can fish from the shore year-round and maybe just talk about what that might look like as the season progresses into summer if I'm still fishing a river or a dam or a lake or a pond type of a thing. Yeah, you bet. Well, at Gavin's Point, Tam, uh, the bubble they call it, that's a slack water pocket where the water comes around. A lot of fish, all species concentrate in there. And uh, the thing is, uh, what you're looking for is where the fast water comes against uh, the slower water uh, where the two meet uh, fast water coming say down from the turbine and then make the turn meaning the water that comes down from the from the dam itself and that creates a, a, a big slack water pocket and you you can use a light jig tip with a minnow cast it up along the outside edge of that pocket and just letting your bait tick off the bottom until it's out of the current and jigging it back towards you, retrieving it back to shore. Thank you, Gary, for the information. Thank you as well for joining us and to our fine sponsors who make Outdoor Adventures Radio possible. Have a great day. Welcome to another edition of Outdoor Adventures Radio with host Gary Howie. I'm Simon Fuller. This week we're fishing from shore. Today some tips and tactics when on a river system, Gary. I've also had good luck with uh, floating jig heads, like the Northland floating jig head, and using a a walking sinker like a Northland roach walking sinker and just enough weight to hold it so it drifts real slowly. If you use too heavy weight with this rig, you're going to get hung up on the bottom. There is a finesse to it. You know, you want enough but not too much, Gary, and there's always that fine line, and depending what sort of current you're fishing, and you'll figure that out soon enough. Yeah. But, yeah, you, you do want just enough weight to keep it there, and you want some movement in it. And you also want to give it, you know, make it easy for the fish. You know, we focused on sort of the spring when the water's colder. They're not quite as active. They're hungry, but they're not quite as active. So you don't want to blazing by them. Yeah, you don't want to make the fish move too far to take your bait. You know, they're just like everything else, they're opportunists. And uh, we'll take it if it's close enough. If not, especially in colder water temperatures, they're not going to run it down. But, you know, when I use a floating jig head, I usually have it about 13 to 18 inches above my weight with the current that's available. Moving the bait up and down, giving some extra action towards the bottom when the fish are able to zero in on it. On many dams, like up at Gavin's Point Dam, Yankton, uh, there's a wall you can fish off of, and uh, when the gates are open just a little, the water coming out has a tendency to go out so far and then come back towards the dam, and that creates that slack water pocket. Good option to work uh, fishing below a dam in those slack water pockets is to cast the minnows and then slowly work it back towards you. Slack water pockets and current breaks. Are you hearing a theme this week when fishing the river? Find them and you stand a good chance to have some success. Thank you, Gary, for the information. Thank you as well for joining us and to our fine sponsors of Outdoor Adventures Radio. Have a great day. Welcome to another edition of Outdoor Adventures Radio with host Gary Howie. I'm Simon Fuller. This week we're fishing from shore. Gary, an overview of some tips and tactics to give me success when fishing from shore. There's all kinds of uh, tactics you can use. None of them are real complicated. Basically, the the jig in the middle or floating jig head or uh, a crankbait or even a crappie rig. uh, If you can keep it from getting snagged up on the bottom, crappie rig with the two hooks with the minnow attached, it's hard to beat. You can jig that also. You know, you can pitch it out, feel it hit the bottom, and just slowly bring it up and down, bringing it back towards the shoreline. So there's so many tactics that work, but uh, there's sometimes when walleyes are pretty finicky, you have to just, especially in the spring, slow things down. And as we head past the spawning time of year, Gary, as we kind of get into the summer months, and I find myself still fishing for shore, what, if anything, 
changes from this week's topic on targeting them during the spring? What, if anything, do I need to be doing to, to have success? Well, you need to, of course, uh, fish slower because fish are cold-blooded. And uh, don't, don't go wild with your, with your weights, like I mentioned. And uh, as I've always preached before, lighter line is going to work real well. It allows that bait to look natural. You don't have those pigtail coils that you have uh, in line after that. has been on the reel for quite a while. But the, the whole thing is, this time of year, is that you want to do things slow and easy. And don't get in a big hurry. Uh, as, you know, the fish are coming out of the cold water, you want to make sure that uh, you don't run it by them too fast and you don't stick it to the bottom so they can't get at it. Thank you, Gary, as always, for the wonderful information. Thank you for joining us today and throughout the week. And a big thanks to our fine sponsors who make Outdoor Adventures Radio possible. Until next time, may your adventures be great. Welcome to another edition of Outdoor Adventures Radio with host Gary Howie. I'm Simon Fuller. This week, we're shore fishing. Let's recap tips and tactics to increase the success rate. Gary? Much of the same information on fishing from a boat is similar to those when you're fishing from shore. The fish are larger until the temps rise and slowly and steady is the way you want to fish. And after the higher spring water levels normalize, those fish are going to move into deeper water in preparation to spawn. And current breaks become more important uh, as your more aggressive fish are located on that outside edge of the current. So you want to fish those. And as water warms, they move into their spawning area, and that's those areas with gravel and smaller rocky bottom or even a swimming-type beach that has some structure. Well, Gary is always a fantastic outdoor adventure. Love to be back in the outdoors. It's a wonderful time of year to be fishing, so hope you took some tips and tactics and have some success. In addition to this radio program, Gary, uh, how can I find you both online and on the TV? Well, Outdoors and Adventures, it airs in eight states throughout the upper Midwest. You can check your local channel for time and day. Uh, in South Dakota, North Dakota, Minnesota, uh, the show is on Midcoast Sports Network and Nebraska News Channel, Nebraska, as well as other local markets. Iowa has local markets also. And, of course, we've had, got the OutdoorsmanAdventure.com webpage and Gary Howie's Outdoors. And you can also catch the show on YouTube and on the outdoor channel, MyOutdoorTV.com. All right, Gary, so many ways to enjoy the outdoors with you. We appreciate you taking us on this adventure on the radio, and we look forward to doing it next week yet again, my friend. Thank you, and have a fantastic day. You bet, Simon. It's always my pleasure. And thanks to our fine sponsors who make this program possible, and thank you for joining us today and throughout the week. Hopefully you picked up some valuable information. Until next time, may your adventures be great.